All right, guys, so let's one more time and let's try and keep it the last time. Talk about the one and only thing we all talk about, the Flipper Zero. Is it a real serious hacking device? Now, the background for this video is that I did actually receive quite a lot of interesting comments from you guys that have a Flipper Zero and you still advocate that this device is so powerful, it is versatile and it can do so many things. Now, while I do not completely disagree with you guys, I do completely disagree with one big thing. And that is, this is not a big, serious hacking device for professionals. It's a fun, small gadget. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the things. First of all, it can do what we can do with it. I'm going to try and highlight it as fast as I can so we can get through this video. And you are more than welcome to have a different opinion than I do. I tend to think that this is not an opinion that I have because I present the facts of a Flipper Zero. I do not have an opinion towards it in that manner. Well, of course, we all have personal opinions. You can probably say, I feel that. But I tend to say, well, is it or is it not a powerful unit? Look at it, look at its process of power. Let's talk about what it can do in a great extent. Now, I created a top 10 list of things that I'm going to talk about right now. <clears throat> the very first thing the Flipper Zero can do that actually it does well to a certain degree is the RFID and NFC emulation and reading. Now, while it can do a few things with cards and reading key fobs and so on from, you know, cars, you know, or emulating an actual key card such as the small white key cards that I do have lying around here. If you can unfold one of them so you can see what I mean. You can buy them on AliExpress and they are easy to overwrite, rewrite because the Sector Zero is rewritable. Well, still, it's quite normal that you cannot really do a lot of things with it. There are, you know, uh, big limitations to how fast it can read a card, how fast it can crack a key, and so on. You also need to be in the very high proximity within a card, for example, in order to clone it, and that's not an easy task. So just stating that that is powerful is, of course, well, I guess cloning is powerful, but that's not really an argument for that this unit is a powerful unit because many other things can do that as well. Some phones, you can root them and they can somewhat act the same. You could even buy an extension module for some of the Arduino units and do the same thing, write your own firmware and you're good to go. <clears throat> it does actually have a sub gigahertz transceiver uh, in ranging from, I think it's 300 megahertz to 928 megahertz. Uh, can interact with stuff like, you know, garage doors and remote key fobs, older wireless systems, uh, making it fun, I guess you can say, to, to test, you know, signals where you can do stuff with it. Some could call it vulnerabilities. It is a word that means a lot, but it doesn't really carry any weight until you, you kind of say, well, what kind of vulnerabilities? Is it just turning on and off the light? You know, is that a serious vulnerability uh, it's not but so there are some things we need to talk about there and 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 you know opening a garage door it can be quite annoying i know that but you know if we're talking about serious things it can do if that is a serious thing well then i guess you probably never studied real penetration testing or hacking or what actually hacking is all about it's not about opening a garage door it does also have an infrared transmitter and receiver, and that's mainly for mimicking the um, remote control for TVs, also air conditioners, you know, and other kind of appliances that use an infrared, you know, remote control. And I, I, I get it, you know, these infrared 
remote universal controls been on the market for more than 30, 40 years, I guess. Probably even more. You can just buy them in a local, you know, hardware store. And they kind of, you know, you can program them to interact with any other, you know, um, TV. Uh, they are programmed to interact with the way that you take the original and you, you know, press the buttons, it reads the signals, and you can actually program it. Whereas the Flipper Zero just, you know, have that hardware uh, software already installed to send some sort of frequency in the infrared uh, radio signal, and then it's going to work. So, but there are other devices, you know, just like, I want to say one more time, this smart device right here, it's, it's, it's this thing costs $2, you can just plug it into your phone and it does some of the same thing. Some phones with infrared, uh, actually, some of the older phones I had, uh, I think it was uh, Android phones, they had the um, uh, infrared antenna on it, so you can use that as an app. So just get one of those phones. It's still, is that a serious thing? I was like, mm, you know, <clears throat> I don't really think it is. Um, yeah. It also got this bad USB payload. I understand that, you know, bad USB can be bad, but it's not a thing that is limited to the flipper. Even though that is great, you know, I would say if you can, you know, get the bad USB to function off a flipper on an actual computer, it can be pretty bad. I know that. So probably one of the best arguments would be, oh, it can also do bad USB, but it's still a bit big and chunky for that i'll say it's not something that i would do it but it's you know i'm gonna give it it's pretty bad you can also like sniff signals uh certain signals and and we are going back again to you know the overall what is in the air of frequencies that it can replay those um signals and people are gonna call it attack but it <sighs> Let's be serious, it is not an attack, it is just a replaying of something that is already there, then it's not an attack, so. Mm. Um, also, we, we're going to talk about the Bluetooth. Um, it does actually have Bluetooth in it, and it's, Bluetooth it doesn't really have any great things going on. You know, sometimes there's a bug and and then you can use that to, you know, restart something or annoy people in some way. But serious hacking is like, no, still not re not still there. Community plugin and firmware, that's another thing. We just saw the light of version 1.0, uh, the actual firmware for Flipper Zero. And I understand that's now out of beta and people is pretty wild about it. And I was like, yeah, I, I get it. It's fun, but... Um, Community can do many things, but it doesn't really matter how big the community is. If the unit is not powerful enough, you know, if it doesn't present it as a thing that can go do complex stuff, it, it doesn't really matter how big the community is. It doesn't do more. So I understand community, great for plugins, firmware. I understand that. It's great. Um, I love it. You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not against the Flipper Zero. I'm just trying to advocate it in a way to so understand what I mean about it. The open source and customizable Flipper Zero, yeah, it's um, it's great. You know, you can do your own scripts and stuff. You can play around with it and learn something from it. I actually believe that the most important part of, about the Flipper Zero is you can learn more about technology. And this is probably why we buy it. But for the majority of people, you probably buy it because of the Marauder board, I guess. I guess that, you know, you want to... You want this, you want this developer board, right? From uh, Flipper Zero. I actually have it. It's the official, you know, developer board right here. There we have it. The Wi-Fi developer board. I do have it. And um, it actually have a version of Marauder on it right now running that I can put on the Flipper Zero. And then boom, we're good to go. We can do Marauder. I also have an extensive RF antenna module that I bought from, you know, AliExpress. And then with that, I can do something called the, um, uh, what is it, mouse jacking attack. Okay, so let's talk about the things that you can GPIO pin extend on the Flipper Zero. So <clears throat> I understand that the Marauder is a fun thing, but it's not really 
it's not really a powerful unit it is attached to. Uh, if I took like a real computer and I took a Raspberry Pi with a real alpha card and I ran something like Wi-Fi instead, you know, it would be more powerful, more dangerous, more everything, you know, compared to the Flipper series. It would just outgame it totally with a thousand percent, like easy, just like like that, you know, and, and uh, I want to say like, it, it, you can almost take a small, you know, board again, and it's probably hard to see, but this is actually a small uh, ESP board and, and put a router on it and then good to go. You can even put a router on a M5 stick. You can put a router on a M5 stack unit. That I also did videos about and they all do the same thing. You know, it, it's not going to work for you. It is not going to crack a lot of hashes it is not just too slow and these days you know if you find a wi-fi access point with a pathway one two three four five six it is not because the flipper zero is powerful you will crack it it's because it's a stupid password that's about it you only need one finger you can crack it and you don't even need a, a brain for it so i'm just I'm just amazed that some people still find, you know, the Marauder firmware. It's like, ooh. Uh, <laughs> I have customizable Mar Marauder stuff going. I have the one from Just Call Me Copo with a touch dis display screen. I have the Wi-Fi watch, the author watch. I have created my own Wi-Fi, the author units. I have videos about it on my YouTube channel. I have the um, Alpha card. I have that actually with a, it's, it's just on, on my computer on just on the other side of the camera. It's, a, it's a, two Alpha cards actually. I have uh, Raspberry Pi units uh, with fully fledged Raspberry Pi 5 with 4 gigabytes of RAM, 500 gigabytes SSD hard disk. You know, this is actually one of them right here with an Arkham uh, setup. It's a fully fledged small computer. This is a really powerful computer. It's a thousand times more powerful than a Flipper Zero ever will be. So, what is it that I'm actually trying to say is is that you know the flipper zero is is it's a versatile it's a playful tool that that can offer multiple different kind of functionalities related to pen testing related to right doesn't mean it does it good I'm just saying it's related to so it's a fun explorative unit it, it you can do signal exploration you can do hardware interaction with it and to some degree. Uh, but it's very limited in terms of processing power and restricted capabilities prevented from being a serious hacking device in a professional context. Okay, so while it can perform a variety of different tasks, useful for pen testing and fingering, you know, it lacks the ability to engage in complex hacking operations or process intensive attacks compared to more robust tools in the cyber security field. So, you know, I want to still say the same thing. The Flipper Zero is a fun, educational tool for enthusiasts, hobbyists, you know, beginner security researchers. It is not a high level hacking device for serious professional people. I'm just gonna, you know, punch that nail down right now it is not a serious hacking device it, literally it is not i haven't heard about one person owning a flipper series saying oh i just hacked something great and serious with it it is fun i understand you can buy different kind of gpio pin devices for it you know extensions and then you can maybe trick the average foe to do something on it and blah 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 but it is not serious to trick the average foe to click a link. And it's not even creating a link, you know. It, it, it. Serious attacks is not made with a flipper zero. No hackers are using flipper zeros to earn money. It is a thing, it's a gadget. I love it. I told you exactly what it can do, I gave you the context. And if you still disagree with this, you know, I, I, I must say it, I'm, I'm baffled. Maybe, maybe you feel more for it than I do. Maybe you are a big fanboy of it. I am a big fanboy of it, but I do put on my reality classes. And that is what this video is all about. It's a bit harsh, I guess, for some people. This is what it is. This is what it can do. This is my 
interpretation of the hardware. I do not have any particular opinion about what it can do. I just relay the message. So if you want to kill the messenger, well, that's up to you. However, messengers are here for a good thing, and I feel that I did the right thing. So, if you learned something about this video, or you maybe got some insight about the Flipper Zero, well, then you will like the video. <laughs> also, try and click the button that makes you subscribe to the channel. Uh, it's going to help me to grow and earn that extra one cent per week. And in the end, it will actually give me something that I can buy more devices. I am still going to do more Flipper Zero, you know, videos. I will still do more about it, but I am actually um, devoted to many different kind of aspects of cybersecurity, which is why I do many different things on my channel. All right, so see you out there and have a really nice day. Mm -hmm.